Natalie Side Surf here of Side Surf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a romaine heart cake. You may be surprised, but this is a sculpted cake that doesn't involve very much sculpting, and I'm going to show you how I made it. So let's get started. We're going to start with real romaine lettuce leaves. So I'm going to peel away my five favorite leaves, and I'm going to use these as a mold for the leaves that I'm going to place on my cake. Go ahead and peel back any of the edges that are curled up. You want to try your hardest to make the leaves as flat as possible. Next, grab some foil. You're going to ball it up, and we're going to place the leaves right over top of the foil, and that's going to help keep the shape of the leaf while we work on them. Here I have edible vanilla wafer paper, and with some water and green gel food color, I'm going to saturate each side of the paper. I even put water directly on a clean table, place the paper over it. You want to make sure that this piece of paper is completely soaked. Then you pick up that wafer paper, you're going to place it right over top of the real romaine lettuce leaf. Now with a nice soft brush that's super saturated with water, you're going to work the wafer paper into all the little veins and creases. You have to be very careful when you're working with wet wafer paper because it will poke holes and tear very easily. So really take your time, don't rush it. So you're gonna do this for all the leaves. You wanna wet both sides of the wafer paper, place them right on the real romaine lettuce leaf, work the wafer paper into the little veins, and then set it aside to completely dry. Here I have the dry leaf. You can see I can easily pull the real leaf away from my wafer paper leaf. And it leaves all this amazing texture. It's so cool. It's like a real natural mold. <laughs> So go ahead and peel the leaves away from each of your wafer paper leaves. Now I'm going to trim away any of the excess wafer paper from each leaf. And then I go in and I tear away the edges. Just by tearing those little bits and keeping it nice and random, it really looks like the real romaine lettuce leaves. It's nice and easy and very effective. Now you can see that my leaf is a little lighter, the color's a little off. So now I'm going to take some modeling chocolate and I'm gonna roll it up into a snake and I wanna define the rib more. So I flip the leaf over and I place the chocolate directly on the rib. So you can see it makes it look more opaque. So it's less translucent, it looks a lot more like a, a, like a white color, it's like a very, very light green color, and it looks more solid, just like the real leaf. Now I'm going to color match some more. So I want to add some white areas, and I want to make some more brighter green areas, some deeper green areas, some more yellow green areas. I'm all about all these different tones in these leaves. Now that the wafer paper is dry, we don't want to use water with the gel food color. Instead, you're going to use alcohol. So you can either use a very, very strong clear alcohol, uh, like a vodka or Everclear is what I use, or you can use extracts like lemon extract because it's nice and clear and you can use that to water down the gel food color, paint directly on the leaves, and since it's alcohol, it will evaporate very quickly. Where if we use water, that's actually going to soak right back in and make your leaf all limp. <laughs> I went in and I added some darker areas on the edge. I think that really helped define the edges of the leaves and it made it look realistic. 
It's finally time for cake. So I took the real romaine lettuce and I'm drawing a template that I'm gonna use to carve out my cake. Keep it simple. I just want it to be the approximate size of the real romaine lettuce. So I use my template. You can see I have a bit of a Frankenstein piece of cake here. <laughs> and that's because this is leftover from a previous cake and I don't waste. So I used that Frankenstein piece and I used my template to cut out chunks to make sure I have two layers of vanilla cake. I took the template, I placed it right on the layer of cake, and I folded it over because I have that little bit of cake I still need. So I placed that on a little Frankenstein piece of cake, trimmed it out, and there you have it, two layers of vanilla cake, no waste. So I placed my layer of vanilla cake down, and this is actually cookies and cream buttercream, delicious. So <laughs> layer of cake, cookies and cream buttercream, you can use whatever flavor you'd like, and then my Frankenstein piece of cake. Now I'm taking a serrated knife. It's a small one and I'm trimming away the cake. This kind of reminded me of a very chubby baseball bat. Now maybe I've been watching a lot of baseball lately, but that's what it looks like to me. So you just go around, trim out the edges and round them out. Next, you wanna seal in the cake with a layer of buttercream. This is called a crumb coat. You just spread the buttercream over the entire cake, making sure every bit of cake is covered. This helps to keep your cake moist, and it also creates a nice smooth surface that we're gonna place modeling chocolate over. Now that the cake is completely covered in icing, you're gonna set that aside, and we're gonna roll out some modeling chocolate. This is ivory modeling chocolate. I prefer to use ivory as opposed to bright white because it has a more natural tone to it. Now place that rolled out modeling chocolate right over top of the cake and start to work it into the sides, trimming away any of the excess modeling chocolate skirt. Now we wanna make sure the entire cake is covered. So for the ends, I actually took a blade, I cut down the center and I folded the chocolate over, making sure the cake is covered. And then I trimmed away any of that excess chocolate and blended in the seams. That's why modeling chocolate's so wonderful, that's why I use it all the time, and that's why I love it. You can seriously cover up any mistakes with modeling chocolate. You just kind of cut it up, chop it up, and then blend it out. It blends beautifully. Modeling chocolate's kind of like clay, so you can go in and take a tool and blend in any lines, dents, mistakes. It's wonderful. Next, I'm going to sculpt the stem. So I have my real romaine lettuce right next to me and I'm going to copy what I see. It's not a perfect circle. You wanna add some texture. It's a little bit lumpy. There's some lines in there. So I took a pointed tool and added texture that way. You wanna try your hardest to make the size of the stem the same as the real romaine lettuce. Once the stem is sculpted, then you can take the dry leaves and you're kind of mapping out where you want them to go. I have my three favorite leaves that'll be on the top and my two not so pretty leaves on the bottom. I'm gonna use those on the bottom because they're mostly covered by the cake. So I pick the cake up, I place the two leaves on the cake board, place the cake right over top of them. Then I take my two side leaves, I place them right on the cake. And then finally, my favorite, most beautiful leaf goes right on top. Now I want to make it look as though the stem goes into the leaves seamlessly. So I took some modeling chocolate and I blend it into the stem and then also into the wafer paper. You have to be very careful because the wafer paper is very fragile, so you can poke a hole in it. So take your time and really try to be gentle. It's interesting because the modeling chocolate is such a heavy, dense material and the wafer paper is nice and light and fragile and thin, but it really did work. It really blended. So going from the chocolate into the wafer paper works, I promise. I added some deep holes to make it look like there are individual leaves in there. This was one of those things where I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna work out, blending from modeling chocolate to wafer paper, but it absolutely did, and I'm super happy about that. Because <laughs> it seriously looks like the leaves are connected to that stem. 
Next, I'm adding a wash of a very, very light green. And that's because in the real romaine lettuce, you can see it's not pure white. It has a little bit of a, a tint of green, so I'm copying that. Then I wanted to paint in a brownish red at the stem. And the last thing I did was place my real romaine lettuce next to my cake romaine lettuce, and I'm trying my hardest to copy some of those green tones in my cake. So I added some more saturated bright green areas and some more muted brownish green areas and even yellowy green. I want all different tones of green and I'm copying right off the real romaine. And there you have it, a realistic romaine lettuce cake. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we post a new cake video every Monday. And I want to give a shout out to Pass or Fail. What? Thanks for being a patron. Check out our Patreon where we post even more cakes and you can speak to me directly. Go to patreon.com slash sidesurfcakes.